uh, today's theme is CMD optimization tips and tricks. And this are purely from my perspective, from my uh, like working curriculum, yes. So I gathered a few tips that you can use in your work if you find them um, needed or something. So uh, this presentation is beginner plus level. So it's pretty straightforward and uh, pretty understandable. Also, as per the uh, timings, uh, I've tried to speak it through, through all of the presentation and it took me like 30 minutes or so. So in 30 minutes, we should be okay and good and we can move up onto the questions if there are any. Right, so right now I will uh, show my presentation, right, and share. Okay, boom. All right, so today, as always, I'm going to <laughs> talk to you about, um, about CMDs and we'll look at what I'm going to show you. Okay, so for Beginners who don't know what is what are CMDs, yes, CMD stands for single instruction multiple data, and what that means is that unlike scalar operation, which, for example, if you want to add two values like A and B and uh, take our result as in C, yes, so if you want to add four and get four of those results, you we'll have to do like four separate operations. A0 plus B0 equals C0 and up to C3, yes. CMD operations allow to add, for example, or do some operations on these values simultaneously, but basically if you have some kind of vectors or some kind of uh, data structure, yeah, you can add all of these guys in one go and result in all of those for Cs, as you can see here, yeah, but with one single operation, be it multiplication, be it division, be it uh, bit operations and stuff. So CMDs are very rich and very fast and very nice in terms when you want to do some optimizing to do some fast code. All right, so how should we load data in our CMD vector? Yes, so if we have just simple variables, it's all straightforward. We simply just like do our <laughs> int a equals something, b equals something, yeah? So if a plus b equals c, okay, it's pretty straightforward. But um, as we have our CMDs, it's not that simple. So for example, let's imagine this, this, this is a memory and we have something like in 32 vector, yeah? So four bytes, four bytes, four bytes, and et cetera. In case of CMDs, we have several types of CMD vectors. One of them is uh, AVX, it's the new one. So 256 bits or 32 bytes. Uh, also, we have a vector that can store 128 bits. It's a SSE vector that was used in previous generations. And also there is an AVX 512 for the new processors, uh, which are of 11th generation and higher. Uh, so I won't be covering AVX 515 here. We're just going to work with these older guys. Uh, but as you can see, um, as we have this simple int vector here, here is how our CMD vector looks like. So we are storing all of those eight points in one CMD vector. So um, then we can move to other 32 bytes, etc. So if we have, for example, 128 bits vector, so we will store just these four guys here, the next four, the next four, and so on. How does it look in code? So pretty straightforward. Let's imagine that we have our in 32 data vector and we want to find some maximum value as we would work in this presentation. Yeah, we will find, how should you find the maximum value inside of our data array? Um, we have our array line, we have our pointer to our first element, and we have our index. So let's start with this guy here. It's a 
vector. So as you can see, here's a CMD intrinsic. And it, right now, in the first iteration, it will just store the lowest possible values out of in 32 t So this guy here would store all of the uh, maximums that we should process in all of our code, in all of our data. How should we load data in code? So uh, in into our CMD web, yeah. So we should use our load uh, queue unaligned the side 256. So this intrinsic allows us to load 256 bits integer type uh, inside of our data array, uh, inside of our CMD web. So um, for that we need to reinterpret cast our pointer to 256 i and simply just read our data. Then we can do this intrinsic max API 32 just to find maximum for eight items simultaneously for each go. So this small cycle would allow us to process eight items in one go by reading our data inside of our uh, intrinsic data yeah, and store the maximum values from all of the data inside of our MMMAX intrinsic vector. And again, here we are using AVX vectors, as we can see, 256 bits left. We can do some minor optimization here that would allow us to gain the speed. So here, we, as you can see, we're using this kind of calculation. So we're just doing index plus eight each time. So as, as we remember, index is an integer, yeah, and we can process eight integers at a time. So we are simply doing it, yeah. And we are doing this access each time. We are iterating through all of our data. But to optimize this issue, we can just simply reinterpret cast uh, our data as the data PTR before the cycle. So we would have our M256I type before our loop and just do this simple iteration we are simply increasing our pointer so if um, looking at speed ups so to process 50005 elements with this guy it took me 3 microseconds and when i done this small optimization yeah just just moved uh, just reinterpreted the data type of our data, not inside of the array, but outside and iterated, which is much more compiler friendly and a simple iteration, unlike this one. So it gave me a performance boost two times. So we uh, have here like 1.5 microseconds. And if you're wondering how long does it take uh, for a normal scalar code to process this, it's like near 25 microseconds or so. So almost 10 times slower than this in the intrinsic. Okay, uh, after doing this, we still will live with uh, these leftovers here, as you can remember, yeah? So these three guys here, and we need to process them somehow. Um, as you can see, yeah, these guys are green, and what we can do is do simple scalar processing. So we just can iterate from this index till the end, we just can find, compare each time. If our value less than uh, next one, we can just uh, rewrite our value and do a simple maximum find. Yes, procedure. But it's all okay if you just have one, for example, great vector of 50,000 elements and you're just processing three or five at the end. But imagine if you have an image, for example, 800 by 400 and at the end of each row you have for example like 12 elements or five elements or seven elements which are not processed with cds but we should do this scalar processing at each end of each row uh, when i was optimizing uh, such a method which required that one uh, so I was thinking, why we can just simply do something like this? So we should just take the last eight elements and not process them via simple scalar processing, but 
uh, use our CD process. And what it uh, gave me is uh, the uh, code speed was optimized like for 10 or 15 percent via this when this this image was processed. So doing tricks like this, so we will process all of the lanes, uh, all of the lane with CD, and also uh, this would boost up productivity for 10 or 15 percent if you are processing, for example, images which have rows and columns and stuff. So this is a very cool trick, and I encourage you to use it if you ever want it. Because I didn't find anything on the internet which tells this one. So uh, basically, I thought about this myself and successfully used it. How should how should we call this? Yeah. So we can see here a uh, simple scalar processing, which I was talking about. So we just take our lengths, which which is a leftover, and iterate to our five, five, three, or however elements is left there. But what we can do is just simply take our length minus eight, which means uh, we just take the eight elements from the rear of our array and process all of them. And just simply find maximum for all of those elements also. So this will give us several duplicates. So for example, uh, we won't be processing like five on the elements, we'll process eight, but uh, in terms of productivity, in terms of speed, in terms of uh, code, it's much more faster and much more uniform. So you won't need to use any scalar code at all, unless your length, of course, is less than eight at all. So yeah, <laughs> then why you see this here? But uh, this would give you uniform uh, processing of all of your code base and will give you your maximum value in the same vector that we use it before. Again, this trick uh, cannot be used um, when your uh, next data is dependent on the previous data, because uh, as you see, it's um, also, it it's only can be used if the data is uniform and you are processing it uniformly. For example, calculating some kind of gradients, yeah, like Sobel gradient, calculating maximums, calculating something like that. So you are not finding anything, you're just processing it. So this trick is only usable there. Uh, okay, so this again is Cindy's and this is scalar processing. <clears throat> After we've uh, processed of all of our data, we are left with our eight elements and we need to somehow take the top top one maximum out of all of those eight elements yeah because we are processing eight elements at a time and thus we need to uh, obtain only one of them which is greater among these eight and how we can do it is basically applying our shuffling techniques so if we look at our avx arrays again avx arrays vectors have 256 bits Per one vector. And as you can see, to shuffle it, it takes three latency. And the permute method intrinsic is being used for that. Why does it why is it so hard? Because the AVX vector consists of two lanes, two SSE lanes, and they are not like merged into one of one uh, lane of 256 bits. It's they are separate. They are processed simultaneously, but operations uh, among them are relatively hard to do. So thus, it requires several more computing power to uh, do so. And thus, if you want to process things more optimally, the um, SSE vectors, which are only 16 bytes or 200, 128 bits, are much more proficient in this case because this one lane is uniform and there are no splitting like in the AVX vectors. And this shuffling, and by shuffling, I mean reordering of uh, the inside elements as you require, wish, and want. Yeah, so this shuffling takes only one latency in place of the three latency that Permute uh, gave us. Okay, um, again, finding maximum value in our CMD vector. So let us see how we should find horizontally, find yeah, the maximum value in our 
eight elements that we found from all of our data. So imagine all of these eight elements hold some of our potential maximums that we can that we should obtain from all of that all, all of that stuff. So first, what we should do is just split those two guys on for two SSE vectors. Again, 16 bytes here, 16 bytes here, and just do a simple maximum intrinsic to find the maximum value among to these two vectors. And as you can see here, as figures here, yeah, five, six, seven, eight. So we've done our max. What we should do next is take these two last elements and compare them with these two first elements. How we can do that is simply shuffling them to the front of our SIMD array and doing our maximum comparison again. Again, maximum comparison takes one latency and this shuffling inside of these small vectors also takes only one latency. So it's relatively fast. Then we should do, again, shuffle here so we can compare these sevens and eights across. And then we will get all of the maximum value which, would, which we want to achieve inside of the leftmost element. And for example, to take the SSE vector from this AVX vector, so to take 16 bytes out of the 32 bytes is zero latency because it's just a simple cast from the greater type to the smaller type. Again, to obtain this in 32 element from this 128 bits element is fast because it's only a simply cast to uh, a single element of int 32. But if you want, for example, to take this element here or this element to compare them by hand or something, the extraction method by index is exists, does exist in our SIMD intrinsics, but it's very costly as it requires a sequence of instructions. Thus, it's not encouraged to do so if unnecessary. Because uh, to obtain it, the uh, code inside of this logic needs to shuffle it to the front and then do this manually. So uh, if you, for example, uh, wanted to compare each of these elements hand by hand, you would need to call all of those instructions that would uh, result in all of those reshuffling and stuff, and it would be very slow. So this trick uh, allows us to do horizontal operation on SIMDs whichever you require, but I encourage you to use SSE vectors, which are smaller, but the shuffling is much more faster and efficient uh, to doing so. And with this little trick, we get our maximum value out of entire that data set from, for example, in my example, it's 50,000 five elements, yeah? Relatively fast, which is 10 times faster or even 20 times faster than the scalar operation that we used. So how does it look at code? So it's not that hard, it's not that scary. We just, this extract method that I told you before, uh, does the cast to the smaller uh, type. For example, here we cast from our AVX vector to SSC vector. So from 256 bits to 128 bits. And for example, here we do the same conversion when we take our topmost value of uh, our maximum value, yes, yeah? so we cast from 128 bits to 32 bits, and these guys are free. So when you take zero index or just use some kind of this, uh, it's just a simple cast to the smaller size and it's free to do so. But for example, if you take this one, yeah, so we take the uh, this lane, five, six, seven, eight, it's a sequence, so it requires first to shuffle uh, that to the front and then uh, obtain it via cost. So it's a much more expensive operation. But nevertheless, we need it. So it, we only would do this once and we should do it to convert it to 128 bits. Okay, so here we would find our maximum for these two guys. Then we shuffle, as I showed you before. Uh, this, by the way, the SSE had this small and neat um, 
macro that allows you to shuffle all of these pretty straightforward and pretty easy. But uh, take into account that these numbers, uh, for example, if we have one, two, three, four, yeah? So the indexes are three, two, one, zero. So from left to right. And by doing so, uh, I will, this will be like um, third index, second index, first index, and zero. So it's vice versa, yes? Sleep. Okay. And once we have our shuffled uh, array, then we can just do again max, then we shuffle again, doing max again, and then just extract our first element. And yeah, we have found our maximum successfully from all of the code. All right, um, that task is pretty straightforward and pretty understandable and easy, but uh, often you need to find something like an index of the maximum value, yeah? So not just the maximum value, but an index of maximum value. And that's where the hard part begins, because if you take a look at the normal if statement, you can um, notice this if closure, yes? Yeah? So we just check whether our value is uh, less, and if it's less, we just apply our iterator, yeah, our data, uh, greater data to it. And thus we find our maximum. And it's all right to do, but when we are doing this, um, these if statements, if you can imagine the CMD is high, like uh, high speed lane as an autobahn, yeah, and an if statement is like a traffic light on it. So, for example, if you are moving like 200 kilometers per hour and there is a red light up ahead, you should break like crazy. And then to gain momentum, you will need to speed up again up to 200 kilometers per hour. And that's very hard to do. And if you are using ifs inside of a CMD code, it's the same thing. So it's a very big toll on the performance and it slows down things drastically. One way to avoid doing so is to rethink if statements as they are. So what we can do is use bit operations to uh, emulate these ifs. And what I'm talking about is, for example, doing something like this. So this code is slower because it's more understandable than the second version that I'm about to show you. But um, it's it allows you to get things pretty straightforward. So for example, here we have an, a statement that shows us that uh, our value, current value, is greater than the value that we obtained from data. Um, and it can be zero or one, as it's a Boolean, simple Boolean flag. We cast it to insert it to and add a minus in front. What this will give us is a mask. So zero or all of bit set. So minus one is like, all of our bits set in our number. And that's precisely what we need. Uh, I called it old max is greater mask. Okay, what we will do next is just simply do an end uh, bit operation, yeah, with our old value. And this will only leave the old value when it's greater than the current value. So if our mask is zero, this statement would become zero. Again, we can do not on this value to reverse bits and compare it and do end operation with our current data, yeah, the data piece. And this would only give some result if our current data is greater than the old one. So only one of these guys can be some value. By doing or, we are always returning some kind of value and we will write either the old value or the new value inside of our max value. So this statement doesn't have any ifs, though it's slower than the original, but as you can see, there are no traffic lights on these fast lanes. This can be um, updated and this can be improved by doing such kind of a trick, so you can use source. Again, as you can see, we, we use this masking with minus, yeah? 
but we are using source and we are using ends. And this code is has the same speed as this code. So they are of the same speed. But as you can see, there are no ifs, there are no potential cache misses and stuff. So if the code is much more complex than this small code that I illustrated here, uh, doing this can uh, sometimes be even faster than original comparison records. Okay, but now that we don't have any ifs, we can construct our SIMD code efficiently. And let's illustrate all of that stuff with finding the maximum element index with index. So let's find our index of our maximum element in our 50,005 element array. And it would require quite a bit of code compared to the previous one. This It's like two times bigger. Um, okay, so I left the, some of the old code parts and added some of the new parts. So first, what we need is this position value. Position value will allow us to know what index uh, do we have on each step of our iteration. So for example, for the first eight elements, those guys would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah? For the second step, this should be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, et cetera. So for each step, we should increment them. And we have this position increment by a. So this intrinsic set R A P 32 would allow us to set uh, these values in our SIMD vector one by one. R means reversed. So uh, to be correct, we should be we should have been setting like seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, or something. Uh, but we have this set R, so we will be, will be setting those in our visual correct way. Um, also, we have this increment that will increment each step. So we would know the correct index for each iteration. And then after all of this stuff, what we should do is just do this procedure here. So first we, sh we should just compare our data. Data is again, the new data that we should compare with the old one, which stored in this max value. Okay, so we, uh, and this method here returns a mask. So it's zero or uh, all of the bit set. Zero X F F F F. yeah, if we are talking about hex. By using this mask, we can leave the indexes that we want to add from the position value. So for example, if we have greater values inside of the third, fourth, and fifth position, on these guys would become zero. And we would be only left with three, four, five. Again, if our previous values were greater on the positions zero, one, two, six, and seven, we would need to leave something that would remove these greater values and leave the old ones. So I call it indexes to leave and use add not um, intrinsic, which means that it would take not uh, operator, bit operator, which would reverse bits of this greater mask. And again, we would take our resulting indexes where would we store our results and leave all of the indexes that were greater than the current iteration. Thus, when adding these two guys, we would take, for example, these three indexes from the new data as they are greater, as the values are greater than the previous ones, and we leave all of the old ones intact. By doing this inside of our cycle, uh, we would store all of the indexes inside of the result indexes, which are corresponding to these mm max values. To process leftovers, we basically do the same, um, but we still need to decrement our positions as we um, start as I previously illustrated from shifted position. Yes, yeah, so for example, if we have five elements left at the end, we would need to shift our previous calculated position by three elements. So it's, I call it position update. And it's precisely what we are doing here. And all of the other logic is the same. The most tricky part is to do horizontal operation on these indexes because <laughs> it's quite a big lump of code. 
So we would just calculate in this maximums here yeah, uh, with our uh, max app and stuff. And all of this code here, we, would, we should be doing the same, but with indexes. So again, we should calculate our mask. Here we have our indexes. We should calculate marks, mask. We should do end and, and not, and then we should add them. Again, we shuffle our maximum, we shuffle our indexes, and do that again and again. And in the end, we get our one index that corresponds to this maximum element. Yeah, and uh, we successfully are doing it. By the way, I will share this code with you so you can use it in your experiments, use it uh, inside of your code if you need, yes. And uh, tweak it a little bit maybe if you want. So what about benchmarks? <clears throat> As you can see, this scalar, uh, max scalar means simple iteration with if comparison and it took me 24.6 microseconds as for the bit operation with source that not does not include any if statements and stuff it took me the same time as this one i tried using std max on the vector and it took me three times slower than the original scalar version and i was like what but it sometimes happens yeah because of the optimizer can uh, much more efficiently process um, the your raw blunt code than this two vector can. I don't know why, but as we can see here. As for the CMDs, our version with um, updated reading, yes, so we where we reinterpreted the cast before uh, doing the iteration, it took 1.6 microseconds, as I stated before. To find index uh, with scalar code, it took me 85 second, uh, microseconds. And to find index with CMD code, it took, it took me 3.9 microseconds. So we can see it's 20 times faster to do it with CMD than with simple scalar code. Yeah. So I thank you all for your intention. If you have some questions, you can ask them. And yeah, it took like 30 minutes. So yeah, questions, please. Uh, hello, maybe I miss the very start of your lecture. Uh, so I'm wondering, is this, uh, is this a part of standard library or you need to download it explicitly? Uh, you're talking about CMDs? Yeah. yeah. Uh, CMDs are a part of standard and uh, it's, um, it depends on your CPU only. So if you're, for example, using MSBC compiler and uh, using some kind of relatively new CPU, for example, something like 2015 or something, you can use AVX instructions and uh, all the intrinsics are available. Also, it's available on most of the compilers. So I think it's a standard as it is. So it only depends on your processor on to the, like for example, if you have the newest processor of 22 year, yes, this year processor, you can use AVX 512, which is even faster and even can even process bigger things. But nevertheless, uh, you can use SSC on all of the processors. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, Alex, uh, question. So you said about processing the tail of the yeah, array. Yeah. 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 Uh, I do recall that there are instructions that accept only part, partially the data. And so you don't process the data two times. Mm, yeah, okay. Uh, there is a gathering instruction, uh, but uh, gather is not that efficient. So, uh, gather is much slower than just taking all of the tail. <laughs> That's why I use just simply. I see. That's the latency of the gather is like eight or not, not even eight, like 20 or something. It's, it's relatively uh, slow. Isn't it better to first align the memory and then use the aligned uh, SIMD operations? Of course. 
if you yeah. can aligning the memory can save you a few latency hops and in for example 50000 elements it can be proven for for example uh, some five or something percent of course if you have like your race which you can build with alignment then it would be very optimal to do so and please so, do so. yeah <laughs> so it's better to process the front a little bit until it's aligned process the aligned memory and process the tail broadly yes but if you for example have your image yeah your rectangular so if you would be processing a little bit your front uh, it can take um, i don't know it, it it can be slower so um you if you can create yeah. if you can create for example your memory aligned yeah like aligned image with aligned memory that would be optimal for all of the cases but um processor nowadays are behaving almost the same with unaligned memory and aligned memory so i think it's not that drastic it would be an improvement if you can but not so drastically nowadays in the later days yeah i think it would be very thanks yeah. thank thanks. you alexander i i have somehow connected question about like third version so we have reading writing uh unaligned operators aligned mm -hmm. operators which are probably not important anymore with modern processors but what was stream write and stream read operators are they giving some improvements uh okay about stream write stream reads um, there is uh, there, there is a way to write a memory that won't be cached uh, and it gave me a very big improvement um when i was experimenting with it there is a way of writing memory in this without caching for later on usage. What, is, what does it mean? If, for example, you just want to store that somewhere and does not, it, and the later yeah. code won't reuse it at all. Uh, you're, more, you're sure that, that you're using like one pass algorithm and yeah, no, yeah, one, yeah. no use but, for it. Yeah. But in most of the cases, if you gather or save something with CMDs, it's um, logical to use the data that you obtained or modified or something in your later on logic. So um, uh, I don't, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't encounter such a cases when you just, where you, you just can process a vector and leave it uh, <laughs> or something. Yeah, probably it can be do some uh, something for uh, like long term usage. Yeah, you just process some data, store it, and forget about it for half an hour or something, yeah, and use it later in code. Yeah, then it would be more efficient because you would recache it inside of your cache and then use. In these scenarios, you it would boost up things drastically because non-cache writing is very fast compared to writing that would be later on used from cache. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I, I, I try. I played with this once when I was optimizing one of the methods. Threshold better to better to not to look for streams, but for cash cash free writing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you won't be using it in yeah, the yeah. next code. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. Understandable. Absolutely. Not to shoot in own leg. Uh, and another question. Um, you you proposed you showed two examples. One was uh how to deal with this annoying tails which like mm -hmm. ruining all beauty beautiness and uh often usefulness of, of uh, same optimization uh what is preferable for, of uh this two cases like what are pros and cons so there are actually two ways either to use scalar version or use uh Pros and cons. So, pros, uh, okay, it's a nice question. Yeah, because I can tell you about cons um, as I use it inside of my code and I optimize with this stuff, some of my methods. Okay, uh, pros is that first you gain speed, <laughs> like I said, 10 or 15% speed up when you have big lanes. And for example, if you have um, 8 bit data and you have 32 bit vectors byte vectors yeah so you, you store 32 elements per, per per your lane and for example if it's not dividable 
and you need to store like uh, 20, you, you have this of leftovers of 20 elements yeah, yeah. or so. Yeah, uh, these, are, these are very vast amounts. So processing it with a scalar is for, for example, 200 or 300 rows would take a very big amount of times. Okay, so the pros is speed. Um, also, I would say that the pros is uniformity. So there won't be any scalar code at all in this scene processing. Um, the cons. Yeah, I, the cons I, I, I was also greatly concerned about uniformity, you know, when you actually process one part with one set of instructions and other part with other set of instructions, they are actually having like differences on machine level and the like machine precision for uh, scalar uh, operation and for simple operation yeah, can vary it, just a bit, but this this bit could be could could give annoying. And it's not pretty if you thing. write like CMD code and then mm -hmm. also always you can yeah, use process sure. this scalar tail. Yeah. So uh, the cons <clears throat> the cons are first that uh, this would grow up the code. Uh, so for example, if the processment of the tail requires some, it's not like a simple maximum yeah, algorithm, it's something like much more harder. For example, it should uh, calculate like, like I done the threshold and yeah. Mm -hmm. So some of the cases require big case tables or something or some kind of other shenanigans that you were processing with several methods inside of your CMD lane, yeah? So this potentially can grow up your code up to two times. So you, can, you probably will have to duplicate all of the logic from the CMD code inside of your tail. It, yeah, I, it can happen because all of this CMD code should be in line and stuff and it should be fast. Yeah, also, uh, so 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 a few examples when yeah, just ordinary processing is looks look trivial in simd operations when the tails are of awful awful mess. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it gives us a mess because uh, it's not pretty yet, but it's fast. So if your code needs to be fast and uniform, it's better to use those tails. Then again, you, you can always use uh, your scalar version and process your leftovers. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think that is it.